So we've made good progress. We've now got up to damp. The brickwork's gone up on the outside, the face work. It's always good to try and get a match as close as you can. And luckily we've managed to do that. We've got the four inch cavity with the insulation and the thermalite blocks with the inside skin of the wall. And as you can see, we're all the way up to plate, which is the timber which sits on top that the roof then comes down onto. As per the regs and drawings, we've used, it's called Rockwall, it's a brand, there's many types. You can get quilt insulation, which is like this, which moves, or you can get your solid slabs of insulation, Celotex, Quintherm are, are certain brands. But we find it easier with these, you set your wall ties, which keep the brickwork and the block work together at your certain heights of your insulation, then it just drops in on top and then it fills the cavity perfectly to insulate cold from coming in and obviously warm from going out. So above here, it's a lintel. There's quite a few brands. This one's Katnik, um, and it comes already with the insulation in. So rather than having to put it in like we do on the wall, uh, the, the lintel comes in with insulation, which obviously stops cold air coming in and warm air going out. So two options of brickwork above on the outside skin. You can either run them as they are, which is obviously a standard setting out, or you can run soldiers where they sit vertically. Um, usually you try and tie them with the existing to keep the same pattern above lintels, which can be windows or doors. So in this case, we've kept the same as existing and that will just then be brought up for the roof coming down on top. So here you can see where the old house is and where the new extension starts. There's two ways of, of basically starting this brickwork. You can either run a petrol saw all the way down here and then use fur fixing or wall starters and that takes all these new bricks, it ties it to the existing structure. Personally, I don't think it looks good. Um, with this, it looks in time, these bricks will weather and it'll look like all part of the same building. So what we've done is we've cut round the old bricks, which are obviously brick bond, and we've teethed in each brick from the new extension to existing. So as I say, in time, this will weather and it will look part of the old building rather than an obvious join where you've just run a saw all the way down, used fur fixes and started it. It doesn't look as good. Take a bit more time and teeth the bricks into existing. So the two ways of teething in, you can easily use a drill and just take a sort of six, eight mil drill bit and take the sand and cement out. Or another way is you can use a disc cutter, a steel, Husqvarna are two brands, where you just run it down. As you can see here, that will obviously leave your bricks here. And then you can take out those halves, which will create this brick bond and go out. And it's a lot quicker using the petrol cutter. Once you get up to the required height of block work, which is the inside skin, that's where your plaster goes. You need to put timber on top in this case. This is just a length of four by two and you can either fix it or bed it. And bed it is what you use sand and cement to put it on because this is what your roof will sit on. So when we cut rafters, it will be sitting on this, this wooden plate. Once it's done, it's always important to remember straps. So the straps come down like that and are screwed to the wall to stop the weight of the roof pushing it out. So it's not just bed on, you can put a couple of screws into the block work, but we always need to put straps down, fixed in to stop it slipping. 